It's time for the geezer to rock. Geezer Butler, that is. Stand by. Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. I am James and today we are going to replace a part that has gone bad in the favorite instrument that is the early 1980s Tokai Hard Puncher. And we are going to replace the original pickup and the controls and the output jack with uh, the EMG uh, Geezer Butler P-Base pickup. It is a passive pickup and um, it is in theory a direct drop-in plug-and-play solution for those of us in the P-Base or the P-Base clone world. So let's open the package. What do we got? Sticky stuff. And see, we got a pot HZ tone. We got a pot HC volume. We got some wires with the jack of the output and our pickups. Get my big fat hands to get them out of there. They're epoxy potted. I would assume that's epoxy. Let's just do it like this. There we go. And oh, check this. So this is the same packaging if you were because you can get you can get just the P base setup, or you can get the um, P base and J base. So they got the little cutout for that. Um, and so here's the other cool thing is if we need it, we got the foam strip for underneath the pickups. So now that we've destroyed that whole thing, um, this is, as I have just alluded to, a plug and play solution. Um, more than likely, you can do this without having to solder, depending on your configuration, depending on what kind of, I believe it's the output jack that is uh, the determining factor. So here's our wiring harness. Wiring piece, wiring piece, wiring piece. Another wiring piece, funky little solderless connector. There is our ground piece. And then the nuts and spinny things. We're gonna put, we got an assortment of those. And then screws to screw everything down. So that's what you get in the box for your Oh, I don't know. I think I paid 109 bucks for this. So let us open up. Oh, it's fancy doubles. Directions on how to do this. Oh, we got a funky EMG sticker. We like the zaps. Oh, yeah, we got all that. Yeah, okay. Installation instructiones. So let's get the old stuff out. We'll bring to you my pride and joy. I don't know. Some people don't like them. I don't really care. I like it. It's fun. The most important thing about this guitar, it's fun. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. My uh, funky little ESP tool. These are great. This one, I mean, you can buy them anywhere, but mine just happens to say ESP on it. I picked it up in the Japan. And now, of course, the air conditioner is going to come on. Well, let's see, actually, I don't know that we've been making videos since we've actually gotten the air conditioner. We'll see what a horrendous, heinous noise 
it makes while I walk around looking for my set of, oh yes, there they are. Here's my Allen key stuff. Okay, how about we just use a screwdriver? So what is it we're, why is it we're replacing this? The reason we're doing this is I have been noticing a discrepancy in the volume um, between my E and my A string to the point where I asked my sound guy the other day to keep an eye on it. He noticed it and then I came home and did a little testing and sure enough I've got greatly diminished output on my A string. This is, uh, these are the original electronics from this, so sometime in the mid, early to mid 1980s. Um, so, you know, that was a, that's a, a pretty good return on investment for your uh, 40,000 yen which we'll have to look up and see what 40,000 yen was and let's we'll just call it 1985. All right, we got that done. Now this instrument originally came with this funky little mounting plate for our electronics. Now is this, was it for ease of installation? Was it an attempt to keep everything grounded? You know, I don't know. It's just an interesting little, little thing. So with any luck, we'll be able to pull this out of here and I won't have to take these strings off. New strings. I changed over from the, the Roto Sound flats, which is what I've been playing with them, and which instantly turned my cute little fingertips into hamburger. So here is all the original electronics from the made in Japan for the Japanese market Tokai Hard Puncher. You'll notice that the pickups, well the pickups aren't potted. Let's get over here where we can see stuff. The pickups are not potted but the pickups are actually connected to this, um, let's call it brass, a brass plate, which is then grounded to here, which would have then been grounded in turn to here. So it was all, you know, I've, I've had people comment on how, how quiet this is, how quiet it plays through the mix. So, Let's put all of this stuff away. Yes. So in case you're ever doing this and I mean, big boys and girls, you can do what you want to do. Um, but if you have an instrument that has some sort of provenance or if you think at some point in the future, someone might find value in those original pieces. Just put them in a bag and stick them in your case. You know, it's better than sticking them in a drawer somewhere and then losing them. If you stick them in the case, hopefully you've got a case or your gig bag even to keep your instruments in then uh, you're not going to lose them and if you ever go to get rid of it or if you're giving it to a buddy or something then uh, 
you can say, oh, by the way, here's the electronics, the original electronics, because, you know, some people are cork sniffers, you know, and they only want the original this or the original that. But So anyway, so we're going to look at our instructions here, and they're going to tell us to connect this like this. They are then going to tell us that this wire goes to this pickup and that you must pay attention because those wires cross over. There are little arrows on the top that will help you guide that in there. There we go. All right, now, let's take a quick look. So on the top, you should be able to see some arrows. Okay, so those are fixated. And now this, let's see, from the pickup to our master volume, white is going to go on the inside. There is the master volume. So now, white on the right, we're going to go from the master volume to the master tone, white on the right, the other white on the right. And then we're going to take our output cable, white on the right, to our output. We're looking at it like this, white and black. And that should be our installation. Now we take our ground from our master volume leaving the end pin disconnected and then we are in like this and then we are in like this and then it said to squeeze with the pliers but I have mighty mighty welder hands we'll just squeeze it in like that so in theory we now have a functioning circuit so let us get, this is supposed to be down here, which means this is going to be up here. Are these taller? Let's see. Are these taller? Yes, they are. We'll take a picture and put that up there. Yes, they are taller. So, now where did our fromage go? That is a little bit of fun. All right, there's one. Make sure we get the logo the way that they want the logo to be. And now,
Nice. Double check, yep. This is our tone. Can you tell we haven't been making videos for two years or a year and such? That enough? Nope. Need a little bit more. Hard to argue with that. Let's put her back together. All right, well, we probably crunched something. <clears throat> so, let's see what happened. And it's gonna be right there, more than likely. All right, so, What's happening is those spade connectors, when they, when I get cinched down, one of them is pinching something. So give me a minute or two, go get a beverage. That'd be an all right thing to do. Get, in fact, get me a beverage while you're at it. And there it goes. All right. So let's think, are we grounding out against the wall of the cavity? So, so if we line that like that and let's pull this back a little further like that. Do a little wire management. Now, let's see. I think that's what it was. I think we were we were making contact with the side with the shielded cavity and that was making stuff not work. So I could have I could have also put put tape around those spade connectors. All right, let's do this again, speed it up. Now, I should probably let you know that I have the guitar set on like something stupid distortion wise, so. So anyways, the, where's my fancy box here? Uh, the EMG GZR-P, P for precision, uh, passive, EMG, plug and play, drop in. What other fun adjectives can I use? Eh, I don't know. Um, 
you know, if I can do it, you can do it. Cause you know, I'm a knucklehead. So we'll see, we'll check it. I got a buddy, his uh, ESP just broke a peg head again. Are you guys having problems with that? If you are, let me know. Um, my understanding is those are Grover machine heads and uh, they are under warranty. He has gotten one of them replaced and has broken another one. Uh, just broke right up here. Uh, if you, the shaft on those, uh, where that shaft gets narrow before it goes into that gear, that's where they're snapping off at. Um, so if you're having those problems, uh, let me know. I well, wanna make sure he's just not the only guy. And uh, if you're having success uh, getting those replaced, let us know um, because you know he's he's down you know for however long until you can go out and find another set. But you shouldn't have to find another set. I mean these silly things have lasted for I don't know. You do the math. So anyways, we, believe it or not, he will he will be the guinea pig uh, with this on Sunday. So his rig is down. So uh, we're gonna bring him uh, the Tokai hard puncher with a, f a base fly rig version two, which is what I played last Sunday, except I played with these. He's gonna actually get to play it with new pickups in it and we'll see how he likes it and maybe give you a report. Uh, so anyways, uh, I'm James, this is Rattle Can Guitar Restorations. Remember, 2020 never happened because there's basically no evidence, at least video wise. If you've got questions or comments, put them in the comment section down beneath the sermon notes. And uh, yeah, we got two more episodes uh, coming up. This one, which we just did today, uh, GK410 speaker cabinet uh, is being redone just on the other side of that camera and then we'll do uh, a, and, and then we'll post up the unboxing and the uh, the messing around with that uh, the tech 21 base fly rig version dose um, I already really like it and I've only had it about a week anyways you guys have a good one cheers Hey, if you like this episode of Rattle Can Guitar Restorations, you might want to check this video out as well. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. Y'all have a good weekend. Cheers. <laughs>